Been wanting to talk to this guy for a fair while now. Anton Leonard Brown, 56 tests for the All Blacks and back in black joins us. Welcome to the show, mate. Thank you very much. And congratulations on your rehabilitation and your reselection. Yeah, cheers for that. It's been a it's been a journey, but it's it's good to be back. Well, you're flying out tomorrow. I mean, that was the ultimate goal after the injury and everything else. I mean, it would have been a long, long, long way in the distance, I bet, at many times. Yeah, I guess um, first major major injury for me throughout my career. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, I've always sort of realised that um, you know, you're always going to pick up a pretty um, big injury along the way at some point. So... I had a, a pretty good run, nine years without any major injuries. So I've got to say, in some way, I've been pretty lucky. Um, but, yeah, it has been a long road, but it, it's been a, a refreshing one. I've actually quite enjoyed um, a, bit, a bit of time off footy um, and, and getting my body right in, in other areas as well. So um, it hasn't been all bad, and, and um, I'm ready to go now. I bet you are. 2016 debuted for the All Blacks. You played in one World Cup already, so hopefully, you know, you're going to stay injury free touch wood until next year as well. Um, how much actual rugby have you played in the last few weeks? How many minutes? I've played 46 minutes for, for Waikato. 46? So, so not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you know exactly. And, and, and when yeah. you went back out of the field, mate, did, did you have any trepidation at all, or had you done enough kind of contact training and everything else? Were you absolutely confident? Um, oh, there's, there's always doubt. Um, it's not really into the first couple of collisions that you, you gain that confidence back. But, um, you know, I'd done a, a month of, of pretty pretty hard-hitting um, contact sessions. So you just got to trust in that. And, you know, I mean, we're, we're all human, as I always say. And um, coming back from a long-term injury, um, it's always going to, you know, take playing the game to, to regain that confidence. But I just trusted in the work I'd done. Anton and Brown is with us on the platform. When you did the injury, did you know straight away? Yeah, you, you're pretty. Uh, I've, I've done my dislocated my shoulder a couple of times before that, and um, it's a pretty easy one to recognise. Okay, so what exactly happened to it? To the knee? To the knee mm. or to the shoulder? Shoulder, sorry. Uh, to the <laughs> no. uh, It just I um, just was jackling over the ball. I think it was Sam Knox, so he's not a big boy. He just come and played me out, and it was, it was the same way I did in Ireland. Um, I did uh. it against the Blues, which was about four or five months later. Um, and they just once they they dislocate a couple of times, um, you sort of advise to get surgery because they just they just come up more regularly um, once you've done it a couple of times. So that's the road I chose, and um, did had something called the Ladder J um, from a very good surgeon, Craig Bull. And um, basically, if, if, you've, if we've all got a, a hundred, what they call a 100% shoulder, the Ladder J is, they sort of say it comes back at 150%. Wow. Um, so, yeah, yeah, hundred, uh, hopefully a better shoulder now. It's, um, it's, I guess it's quite restricted because they, they do tighten, up, tighten it right up. But in terms of it coming out again, it, it should be good. So, you know, so they would have talked you through all elements of the operation. You'd be a shoulder expert by now, I bet. Yeah, yeah, this is my, my second uh, surgery. So I I had shoulder surgery done before I started professional rugby at 18 years old. Um, it's amazing how much in, in 19 years, uh, I guess, surgery has progressed yeah, in, the, in the shoulder space. Yeah, man. Um, I didn't get the latter J done at that time, um, so... I did this time, so um, I know uh, shoulder surgery very well. <laughs> yeah, Anton, do you feel lucky as well that the status that you got and the level of professional rugby that you're playing in that, that you actually, you know, you get to to meet the great surgeons, you get the the treatment that you really need and things. I mean, do you ever feel grateful about that? Do you ever sort of sit there and think, wow, it's actually probably lucky I'm actually in this occupation then in that case? Oh, certainly. Um, we get looked after extremely well and and like I said, you know, Craig Ball's regarded as one of the best um, in New Zealand. So, yeah, just just so fortunate. And I guess when you talk about, you know, coming back to play and if, if you're worried or not, you just go, you just think back to that. You've, you know, you've had uh, one of the best surgeons uh, in New Zealand do your shoulder. You've got, you've had a great team of, of trainers and 
uh, physios around you. So, I mean, it's uh, it's pretty easy to trust in that, um, yeah, when, when you're dealing with those situations. When it first happened, did, you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't really know how to say this. I don't, I'm not talking about dark thoughts, but did you ever actually think, oh, my God, this could actually be it? Because as you said, I mean, if you've had such a great run of nine years without any serious injuries and things, did you, I mean, was it did, it, did it come as a real shock? Oh, not really. I, I guess, you know, um, as I said before, you know, I always realise that every time we run out, there's risk of, you know, injury or, or major injury. I mean, obviously, it's not ideal, but, um, yeah, I guess it, I actually accepted it pretty quickly. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it's a, to me, it's uncontrollable, you know, getting a, an injury or a major injury, you can't you can't control it. So, um, yeah, my mindset sort of shifted pretty quickly to, to getting surgery or, or getting what I needed to get done, and um, and then chipping away off my rehab. Angelina Brown with us, and and was that when you do go into the rehab? Is that every day? Do you have like? Is it almost like going to a job? You got you know this bit here, you got an hour there, you got to do this there. Is that is that how it happens? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it's a yeah, it's a tough process. I mean, like when you're and as I said, for so long I, I was playing and and in part of training, so that that's really the easy part. But you know, rehabs, you know, a slow and a lengthy process, and it, it can be quite lonely at times because you I'll don't bet. have all your teammates around you. Yeah. Um, but I yeah, I guess um, the hard thing about shoulder surgery is, is if if it wasn't if we weren't playing rugby, I probably wouldn't have need, needed surgery. But because we play high contact sport, obviously the risk of it coming out is really high once you've done it a couple of times. And I mean, before I went into surgery, my shoulder felt pretty good. You got all your movement and stuff like that. You go in and you sort of go backwards. You're, you're in the sling for six weeks. It's pretty sore. You get out of the sling and then it's about getting your range of movement back and your strength. And I guess the frustrating thing is, you know, you you've lifted these sort of weights for so long and all of a sudden you're doing 2kg dumbbells and you're only benching the bar and stuff like that. So, hey, mate, that's normal, uh, okay? Uh, that's normal for us, right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess, yeah. <laughs> so the rest yeah. of us, mate, we're going, we're nodding, um, going, yeah, that's cool. Keep going, sorry. Oh, I, know, I know what you feel like now then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look, I want to also uh, ask you about a couple of things. Um, do you, you know, when this happens and you're having to go through your rehab and everything else and you've got this in front of you, um, do you feel at all like an imposter sometimes? Because I know a lot of guys when and guys and girls when they're in this position, they don't want to hang around the team because they're not playing and they kind of feel like they're just a bit of a nuisance, whereas the rest of the teammates are going, God, we'd love to see you, mate. Come along in that. Is there, was there kind of difficulty? Did your head play tricks with you on that kind of stuff? Yeah, for sure. Um, I guess when you, when you get a sense that you can't contribute in, in terms of like at training or in playing, I guess you do feel like a little bit of an imposter. Um, but you're right. Like um, when I think about you know when I'm playing and I'm fit and there's injured players in there, you know you you love having them around. Um, so yeah, it's funny. You know, obviously I'm a I'm a big advocate about mental health, and it's amazing the games that the mind can play on you. But I, I guess it's just about recognizing that and and realizing that. Um, the boys do love having you around, and um, it's actually it's actually important to be around your teammates uh, during times like these. I bet. The other thing is, you know, you know, I mean, I went through some stuff last year. I'm not going to go into it, but you know, you kind of I I remember feeling at the time like I just didn't want to converse all the time or talk to people about it because I just felt like all I was doing was moaning about my own shit all the time, you know, and. And, and and even though people love you and they want to talk to you about it and they want to know how you're feeling, how you're getting on and that, do you kind of feel a bit like it's it's easy to get, as you say, into that self space, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I guess um, I I guess because when you're in a sling or you're injured, that's everyone will ask you that question: how you going? Blah blah blah. blah. I mean, you don't put, walk past one person without them asking that first. And yeah, I, I guess when you're in that situation, when you when you're getting sympathy all the time. Um, you do you sort of get that feeling like, oh, I don't want to um, look like I'm I'm showing weakness or, or whatever, yeah, or yeah, like that. So yeah. I guess again, like the the mind plays funny tricks tricks on you, but that that's all part of of being human. Um, and um, if you can re again recognise those situations, then 
um, you can sort of get out the other side and feel better about it. Antonina Brown is with us. I think somebody needs a walk in the background, mate, by the sound of that barking. Oh, that's a, the dog next to the, yeah, the <laughs> is next door neighbour's dog. <laughs> He's always barking. <laughs> if they're listening. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully they're listening. Take the dog for a walk, mate. Okay? Hey, look, okay. enough about this. You're back in black. That's fantastic. And it just must be like hearing that name. I don't know how it happened. Did you get a phone call that said, hey, man, you're back in the squad? How did how did, how did did that day go? No, nah, yeah, I didn't I didn't get a phone call or anything. Obviously, I, I played at 2 o'clock. Um, we've, I've had the quarterfinal against Bay of Plenty. Um, and then I think the team was put up on, on social media at 4. So... Um, when everyone was actually running on the field, they sort of they were coming past and said, "Congratulations, you've been named on the end of your tour." So that, yeah, that's sort of how I, I, I found out. Fantastic way to find out! What a brilliant way to find out! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because your mind's taken away from it and things. Look, as Ian Foster, um, you know, we we were talking to him a couple of weeks. He he didn't kind of he didn't let it go, but he kind of intimated. That, and uh, I was so pleased for you. Okay, twelve or thirteen. Have you decided yet, or have they decided for you? What is going to be your best position from here going forward? Yeah, I, I'm still not not sure. Like, um, I think I, I've always, you know, a lot of people ask the, this question, and I, I see it as a strength to be be able to play both positions well, mm-hmm. um, to be versatile. Um, so, look, I, I I enjoy both positions. Um, Twelve. I like because I'm more involved. Um, you're probably going to touch the ball more, um, but I guess you don't have as much space. Whereas at 13, um, you know, you might not get the ball as much, but you'll get ball in space and you can put people away. And then at 13, you probably influence um, the D a little bit more. Not not in terms of probably tackling, but in your positioning, you can force teams back in and stuff like that. So, look, I enjoy them both and. Um, yeah, it's really it's really up to the coaches who they want to put me. ALB with us, about to catch the plane tomorrow. Mate, when your name gets called and you're in that test side, let's hope, fingers crossed here, this happens. Um, regardless of which game it is, whether it's Japan to, to start with or whether it's Wales or Scotland or England, have you, have, you, have you thought about how good that is going to feel or are you just going to wait till it happens? You probably um, wait till it happens. It's... It's probably something as a professional rugby player, and I'm sure a lot of professionals feel this, that we don't reflect on enough, you know, how special those moments are because everything moves so quickly, you know, and you always want, you always want the next thing. But um, I guess certainly when, you know, when they name the team and if my my name gets read out, there'd be, be a, a little bit of emotion for sure. I know when um, on Sunday before the game, when I was coming back to play for Waikato, um, you know, I sort of, you know, felt, felt plenty of emotion because you sort of reflect on the last six months and and what you've been through. So, yeah, I'm not I'm not thinking about it, that at the moment, but sure. I'm sure at, at the time uh, I'll, I'll have that feeling. Mate, and you know, sitting there watching uh, watching your team, watching our team, watching watching my team, and you know, going through what we went this year, and you know, so many knives out and so many naysayers and so much bickering and all of that kind of stuff, you know, uh, it must have been bloody rough and bloody tough because especially for a guy like yourself that the best thing you can do is do something about it, but you weren't able to do anything about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I guess, like, when I'm not involved in the team, I'm a fan like anyone else, but I guess um, I have a different perspective on on how I view the team because I, I know personally how hard it is. Um, and when, when you know players personally and, and you've been a part of the environment and you know what it takes to, to perform and win all the time, um, you know, your your opinion and, and your thoughts on things change, you know, drastically. So, um, you know, as a fan that sat on the couch, I, I definitely shout to them and um, there was a lot of a lot of things said that was, you know, not on at all. The agreement. Um, totally unfair, mate, I thought. Yeah, a um, lot of it. Mm. Uh, yeah but... Um, at the end of the day, um, they showed their resilience and, and how good they are to you know, be where they were and turn around and, and win the Freedom Cup and, and win the championship. Yep. shows their resilience. And I'm sure they'll, they'll learn a lot from that. And um, I guess when you go through dark times, you, you come out the, the other side better. And I think it'll be a, a great learning curve for all.
Oh, look, and so you were the kind that got up at three in the morning to watch in Joburg and Nelspruit and that? I hope you say yes. Yeah, I actually was, yeah. On, but yeah, um, absolutely. Like, like you said, like you said I'm, I'm, a, I'm not playing rugby, I'm a, I'm a fan of it. So yeah, I, I just love watching the All Blacks play, whether, whether I'm a part of it or not. Also, I mean, we've had 15 minutes. I'll let you go because it's probably way more than we were probably allowed and uh, you've got other things to do. But so good talking to you. So proud of you on the comeback and um, get that jersey back on, mate, and win us some test matches or help win us some test matches, eh? So it is. Thanks very much. Pleasure. Yeah, thanks very much for, for jumping on. It's Anton Leonard Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. And I thought, uh, yeah, I could have kept on talking to him for another 10 or 15 minutes, to be honest.